First, further signs that the Arab world is ready to normalize ties with Syria's President Assad. The United Arab Emirates foreign minister was in Damascus Tuesday. Neither Syria nor the UAE would confirm the meeting. But if true, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed would be the most senior Emirati official to visit Syria in the decade since war broke out. It follows Jordan's move last month to open its borders with Syria. According to the UN, at least 350,000 people have died in the Syrian war. Millions have been displaced. Well, for more on that, I'm joined by Dr. Nazir Alomari, a writer and political commentator. He joins us now from New York. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Now, um, Thank you for having me. It's good to have you. The UAE originally, uh, a few years ago, backed the rebels trying to oust President Assad. Now they're one of the strongest voices calling to rehabilitate him. Why the change? Well, I think we're looking at uh, p uh, political play here. Um, I think the Russians, in coordination uh, with the Gulf states and Jordan, uh, are trying to uh, get Assad to move away from Iran and the Iranian influence. And in return, uh, the Assad regime wants to be rehabilitated. Uh, he, he needs money, he needs resources. And that is where the Emiratis come in. And uh, Jordan was trying to facilitate, uh, you know, that transaction, which uh, would have resulted, uh, which will result in the Lebanese uh, getting, uh, uh, you know, energy and oil and electricity. So I think this is uh, coordinated uh, by the Russians, probably blessed by the Americans. And uh, it's intended to remove Iran from the picture. Well, talk us through the Iran angle uh, a little bit more. Um, what does the UAE gain um, from stronger ties with Assad when it comes to countering Iran? Well, uh, I mean, you know, this is the, the United Arab Emirates and all the Sunni Arab states uh, were actually fighting the Assad regime by providing support for the Sunni rebels who were trying to oust uh, the Assad regime and his uh, Iranian supporters. Now, the Assad, you know, Assad, the Assad regime unfortunately has, has won in uh, Syria. And the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan feel like, uh, you know, the Iran has uh, a lot of influence. Uh, Hezbollah has a lot of influence in Yemen and in Kuwait and, uh, you know, supporting cells all over the Middle East. So they believe, uh, you know, getting the Russians, uh, you know, to remove uh, uh, the Iran, to help them remove Iranians uh, from Syria. That will reduce uh, the, um, the the level of influence that, that they have. So I think this is the political play. But, you know, there is little trust between all these powers. They really don't believe that, the Assad re that uh, you know, these countries want the Assad regime to stay in power. But for now, I think there is a lot of support for rehabilitating uh, the Assad regime. And the UAE has gone a step further, in fact, because it's called on the U.S. Uh, to lift sanctions on the regime. Uh, back in September, the Biden administration said it had no plans uh, to change its policy uh, towards the regime. Do you think, though, they might lift those sanctions? I, I doubt it. I think the United States views this whole conflict from a, another lens, and that is the return to Geneva, uh, the transitional government, a new constitution for Syria, uh, however, I, I think uh, it's in the interest of the, you know, American policymakers to remove Iran from the picture. Since the Americans are engaging with the Iranians on their influence in the region, so it makes sense to uh, re remove Assad out of that alliance with Iran. Uh, so I think eventually the United States will insist on transition, will insist on a new constitution. But that is, uh, you know, uh, that is for another day. Uh, you know, for the American policymakers to deal with. For now, there is re really no way uh, out of uh, all these conflicts unless if something changes. And I think this is probably a strategy that the United States is a blessing right now. Well, what about uh, moral considerations, though? We've had uh, 10 years of an absolutely devastating war. We've had chemical weapons. We've had the bombing of innocent civilians. Can the world really embrace someone like Bashar al-Assad? Well, they shouldn't, and I, I don't think uh, we will soon see, uh, you know, uh, anybody embracing the Assad at the international stage. Uh, this is a regime that was uh, uh, accused uh, uh, by, uh, you know, gassing its own people. So it's really hard to see the Assad regime coming back as a legitimate regime. 
Uh, however, we, you know, Russia wants to rehabilitate this uh, regime under, you know, strict conditions. They want to see a political transition. So I think the Assad regime might emerge uh, in a weakened state, uh, you know, sponsored by Russia. Uh, uh, but I doubt that the, the international community will, will drop uh, all the accusations against the Assad regime or the United States uh, government, uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, placed sanctions on this regime uh, b because of uh, its crimes against the humanity, against the, the people of Syria. However, you know, there, there hasn't been a whole lot of change, and I think this is probably one way to break uh, that st stalemate uh, in, in the region, uh, given the Russian influence uh, that is now a reality in the Middle East.